Dekker vi nu div keko masa hashe, keko speciality sa hashe, kan ve shasav os for gore er la ko speciality la ko runach in in art forgen of ko tavata kauna ha fit foote is star na tira er stache lenadina ha in our in our down to agasos ko shivshe Lavor Aigna Alan Oskelta. There'll be some English, don't worry. <laughs> I was living down for a short time on the Blasket Islands in, in West Kerry um, last year, and I came across a beautiful book by Tich Nhat Han, or Tit Nhat Han, or Tik Nhat Han, or whoever his name is pronounced. It always seems to be different. And it was he was referencing that if we saw somebody walking on water, that we would pronounce it, proclaim it to be a miracle. And I was, happened to be looking across the Blasket Sound to at Balia Dun Queen, Agus Countira, Dun Moor, Agus, and, and I was thinking to myself, yes, it would indeed be a miracle if I saw somebody walking across the Blasket Sound. And, but he went on to explain that water is, is just a particular energy vibration. <coughs> Excuse me, and that land is also a particular energy vibration, and the human beings are a particular energy vibration, and that the land supports us in the same way that water doesn't, or that if water would support us in the way that land doesn't, each is, each is its own miracle. That we walk on land in itself is a miracle, the same way as if we were to walk on water. So that kind of impacted me, and I, I went about my, my evening, and the following day we were coming back in from fishing. And we were coming in on, on, on the rib, and I found myself looking at, at the sea and just stripping myself back from, it wasn't an act, it wasn't an action that I decided I was going to do, it just my sense of myself completely and utterly fell away. My social self, my, my, my sense of myself and my society totally fell away. And a life force came through the sea that I had never seen before. I was experiencing it just absolutely and utterly as it is, with none of my labels or none of my viewpoints or any of my history or anything tied into it. And I could see the, the seals on the beach and the, and, and the, and the Trabon and the Blasket and, and the Great Blasket Island, and in the background, the sun was setting behind the silhouette of, of Inish Tushkar, the Far Marav, and I, I realised that place that our beautiful Irish philosopher John Moriarty talks about that silver branch perception, that ability to see the world for the beauty that it is and to cross over into a paradisal view of the world is actually experienceable, which I'm, I'm sure plenty of people here have experienced as well. But in terms of my own behaviour and looking around at society in general's behaviour, and it's more about our behavior because it seems the information is all available. We've all read the articles and shared the videos and put stuff up on our Facebook pages and stuff like that to, sh to show and to display what needs to be done. And we're aware of what those things are, but our behavior seems to be a little bit slower changing and our relationship with this gorgeous blue jewel hanging in space is, there's an imbalance and the imbalance is in us. And so when our behavior isn't changing at a rapid enough pace to meet that need, we have a problem. And I feel it's at that level, it's that when we strip back our sense of ourselves, when we're willing to let go of ourselves in who we are in our society, that we can connect more deeply with the earth, we can connect more deeply with the world around us and with the people around us. And that is where the, the ability to change lies. And it's interesting to be here in this place. And I, and I always have, I've, I've asked this question, I don't know, is it a kind of a primeval masculine thing? I'm not sure. I don't want to offend anybody here, the females in the room. Um, would I die for my country is a kind of a thought that I've had for, for since I was young, since I read about the history of 1916 and, and Wexford in 1798 and these things that impact you. And, uh, my country, I'm not sure, I'm not as really sure what my country is um, anymore because I don't know the nation state and politics and economics and the kind of functionality of, 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 of our country. I don't quite identify with it as much anymore because we seem to be intent on selling off our, 
our, our national assets and our and to even call them assets is an offence against what they are. You know, to to sell our water and our forests and our seaweed and things like that is it's hard to identify with that and say you'd lay down your life for it. But it does seem like a worthy effort and a worthy possibility to lay down your sense of yourself on Main Street, your societal self, your social self, to lay that down for a while and to deepen your connection with the world around you. That's a, that seems like a possibility that could be worth exploring. And so we might explore it. So there's an invite an invite to you now that I'll extend that you can take and that you don't have to take also. You have that freedom. Um, rather aptly, you have that freedom. But if you would like to go on that journey, by all means, come with. So if you would like to sit in a nice, relaxed manner in your chair, both feet flat on the ground, And when you're ready, you can close your eyes. And just become aware of your breathing. And if you bring your awareness to the top of your head and allow it to fall down to your forehead, your eyes, your nose, your mouth and chin, down to your neck, to your shoulders, right down the length of your arms to the tips of your fingers, back to your chest, down your stomach, hips, legs, knees, down to our calves, and down to our feet. And from the base of our feet, if we can envisage roots growing down through the base of our feet, down through the concrete floor beneath, down to the earth beneath that. And the next two or three breaths that we take, if we take them up through those roots, up through our body, and release them out into the air. The next breath we take in through the air, through our mouths, down through our bodies and back down through the roots, back down into the earth. If we do that ourselves a couple of times. I'm going to invite you as you continue to breathe to give a sound to the room from yourself, from that place inside yourself. A hum. We're gonna take collectively two breaths up through the roots in our feet, as we've just done through our body and out through our mouth. And on the third breath that we take, we collectively release that hum from deep inside of ourselves. Some people will last longer than others. We will just continue and continue and continue.
bring our awareness back to our feet. Back up through our legs, our waist, to our stomach, our chest, our shoulders. up to the tops of our heads. And you're welcome to come back into the room. Thank you for that. There's a time at which when we have to go outside of ourselves with that, it's that kind of uncomfortable part where I wonder what the noise that I'm making and the person beside me and the person in front of me or behind me and that, what that sound is and what that sound is like and what that sound is that comes from us is when we meet that part of ourselves, our social selves, our concern about what's outside of ourselves and to meet that and to welcome it and for it to be welcome, accept it and to still move through and to release that sound out into the world from that deeper place is for me our, our great value and our great opportunity. Thank you very much.